Howdy guys, Jimmy Song here. I wanted to go through in this video a few of the game theory scenarios that might happen with the Bitcoin Cash split. I know that I should probably publish an article about this and go through it very, very rigorously, but um, here are just a few of the things that might happen. Um, the first thing is uh, to, to realize about this that's very different than, say, the hard fork that happened last year with Bitcoin is that both of these things are hard forks. That is, they are forced upgrades. So you, you can't be on either chain without running their software. So in a sense, it's kind of like launching new software. Um, and, you know, you, it happens to have the same history as Bitcoin Cash. Um, but more or less, uh, you know, you, you can't follow either chain. There's no default here. If you, if you are the default, then that's like a third fork. Uh, so it, it ends up being, uh, this interesting scenario where if you want to be on one of the chains, you have to sort of purposefully do it. You have to upgrade the client or whatever. Now, um, you know, Bitcoin ABC, the, uh, the client was actually released a while back. Um, and so was, uh, I think, uh, the SV one as well. So you, you could have had the binary significantly before, uh, the November 15th date. But that's, that's the first thing to realize. You have to sort of purposefully run whatever node. Um, for miners, uh, obviously they, they know exactly which chain they're mining on. And it does look like, um, you know, SV has a significantly more hash power than, um, than ABC does. And this is largely, uh, due to CoinGeek or something like that. Anyway, that gives, um, the people with, the more hash power, the opportunity to attack the minority chain. Um, so if it's something like a 70-30 split and, um, uh, you know, you, you have 70% of the hash power, what you can do is you can attack the, uh, the minority chain by mining a bunch of empty blocks, not releasing them until the right time. Um, and that would just sort of throw everything into chaos, throw out... Uh, a lot of uh, transactions back into the mempool and allow it basically to, you know, like be rolled back. Um, and if you are really clever about it, you can double spend um, and as a result sort of bankrupt other people. Um, now, these are kind of far-fetched. Uh, it's like people already know that this is a possibility, so they're kind of preparing for it. Almost every exchange is saying, well, we're not going to let you withdraw or deposit until, you know, like... Uh, either chain is stable um, and it's entirely possible that neither chain is very stable for a while and if you do like a 10 block reorg every day um, you know even if it's you know it looks relatively stable it's not really reliable uh, without something like 30 confirmations or 60 confirmations or something like that um, but a 10 block reorg is definitely something that you can do with 70 percent of the hash power now, in order to do that, you need to actually control the equipment. You can't be a mining pool that ha that happens to be pointing because then, you know, uh, other participants can just sort of point away. Plus, you're not making any money as a pooler if you're if you're just um, if you're if you're uh, throwing away your hash rate as a result of these reorgs or something like that. So. It gets to be this very tricky situation where uh, one side can uh, sort of hold the other one hostage, but at, at cost to its own security. Um, at a certain point, the other chain can counterattack. Um, and that, that gets really tricky as well because uh, then as, like if SV were to attack ABC, then ABC can go back and attack SV. And, we don't know how much hash power is in reserve. There are rumors that Jihan Wu has like deployed 40,000 S9s in some remote province of China to defend against possible attacks. Could also be an offensive maneuver as well. So it's really hard to say. Um, and, you know, depending on who actually controls it um, or who, who has the most say in that community, it's entirely possible that it's all for naught. Uh, because you can attack the other chain. So SV can attack the ABC. But then, uh, say, Amory Sashay goes, well, you know what? Um, I'm just going to update the ABC client to say that this uh, block that reorged the last 30 blocks or th this chain that reorged the last 30 blocks is invalid now. And they can hard fork right away and invalidate that entire chain. And uh, and that's something that they can kind of do because it's uh, it's more or less a centralized operation. A hard fork is a centralized operation. And this is why, you know, they're, they're having this argument because 
you know, they're, they're two centralized entities fighting over who gets to control, you know, what the software upgrade is going to be. So in a sense, uh, that that's entirely possible. So, uh, you know, they always have that ace up their sleeve. So I think that kind of prevents the other chain from, um, you know, at least attacking more than a few times. I, like the first couple of times, it proves that, you know, it is centralized and then that's it. Um, but after that, it's just sort of like, useless because it's already immunized because there there's this very easy centralized way of defeating that particular attack uh from a decentralized a decentralized uh immunity would be much more useful obviously uh but that's not really easy and uh and it requires the like a lot of social coordination which i'm not sure is uh is the road that uh bitcoin abc might go down but anyway those are some of the scenarios, and these are things that I wish I could be watching a little more closely. Unfortunately, I'm teaching uh, both on the 14th and 15th, so I can't watch it too, too closely. But I will be keeping up with uh, what's going on. Anyway, I hope that helps you. This song is 